What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's me, Zafer, and we're going to go over a breakdown of my latest track, Soul Beautiful. Hope you enjoy it. I hope it's uh, educational to you, informational, helps you get a little further along in your musical journey, and um, I'll show you a little bit of the tips and tricks about um, what I did here. So uh, first off, uh, I guess I'll play a little bit of the piece for you here. So uh, that is a little bit of the track and uh, we'll just kind of go over the most important elements that I kind of used here. Uh, the first being this little um, flute slash vocals part patch here. We'll go to preview. Uh, it's real light touches. It's real kind of like, uh, it's not super into the track, but it kind of comes in and and shows a little bit of the piece of the song. This is kind of what defines the little melodic section that goes along with these little uh, electric piano slash harp, um, I don't know, like endings, you know, phrase endings. It's kind of hard to explain in words, but I'm trying to get there, so bear with me. I'm trying to explain it in a way that makes more sense. Um, so we have that going on, and then uh, of course, there's a sort of consistent little level of the bass that is going throughout the whole track. Um, as you can see, it follows just a small little four chord progression. And um, after that, it's uh, pretty much whatever you want to do. Uh, I chose to go this way. I like the lower BPMs, the sort of softer, smoother, chiller uh, aspect of it because I like the way it makes me feel as the producer and also like the way it turns out. So um, I'll let you hear the bass here just to kind of get an idea. And then one important thing that I like to mention about this while this is going on is uh, you can see the rhythm here, it's kind of consistent. Uh, the rhythm only really is defined from the first half a bar, I want to say. And uh, that's where the bass, the where the bass notes hit at. This defines the rhythm of the track, and uh, that can be useful for you if you're not really sure, like, well, what's what's the flow? Like, how should the flow be? Uh, you know, pay attention to the bass lines in the track, and they sort of define a uh, set flow or rhythm because how it meshes with the drums throughout the track, it'll help you sort of create your own. So there you go, that is the bass, and um, hopefully that can help you, you know, and this is this is the thing I always say is, you know, if you're not really sure, if you want to make something that's kind of similar or starting with this, like a starting point, you know, grab the notes of this bass line, you can look at them right here, grab these and uh, put them in your own DAW, put them in your own FL mobile app, put them wherever, and then start creating your own sort of version to that. You can even switch the rhythm up a little bit. Maybe you can bring the notes back. You can bring them forward. Uh, whatever sort of makes you feel better about it, then uh, you should go ahead and try it, you know, because that's sort of how music is, is really made. It's sort of how it becomes something that's more unique to you as the creator and unique to the listener itself. Um, so moving on down the line here, of course, we didn't really mention the pianos, but um, uh, it's pianos are something that I kind of always sort of jump into and 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 use in a track. Uh, for this one, it's sort of just kind of uh, using these like um, you know chords that slowly float up through the uh, scale here, and uh, this just has a lot of effects on it. It's EQ'd out. It has a little phaser, uh, some reverb and uh, a little bit of delay and this is just to all push it in the background but give it that sort of ethereal quality when you hear it throughout the tune volume's pretty low 
and uh, and then everything else is looking is looking good from it. So here we can play this as well before I get too far. See, you can hear it like echoing throughout the track. It's really meant to be ethereal. It's meant to be kind of in the background to sort of give you a more, um, I don't know, more of a space to kind of follow along with the tune. I really like it. That's all it really was. It's just a personal choice. Uh, there's nothing really special about it. Uh, the drums here, there's a little bit of compression going on through the drums, which I think this is just a kick. If we go to preview on just the kick, just preview the kick. Yeah, and uh, really, like I said, a lot of the decisions were made onto the phone speaker. So, um, but you will, I would suggest that you reference back and forth between uh, the phone speaker, whatever speaker you're on, and a set of headphones. It could be some earbuds. It could be, you know, some some monitor speakers you may have. Just have a couple of different sources of listening to the music while you're creating it. Uh, anything works, but just a little like A and B to give yourself some comparison to how it might sound on different elements. Um, so same thing here uh, on the second part of the drums. This is just like some hats. Hats and claps. Nothing too special, but we can go into the uh, MIDI section or the step sequencer side of things. And uh, you can see I used a little volume automation. So you can kind of go back here. You can see the how the each individual volume level of the hats are different throughout the tune, uh, throughout this little pattern, I guess. And this gives it more of a natural quality, natural sounding. Uh, it makes it not sound super robotic and repetitive. Uh, so if you're not doing that, you know, look into doing that with your drums. Add a little volume variation. Throw a little swing on it. There's always a little bit of swing. Like that's like five percent swing. So I'm at, you know, try throwing a little bit of that to create a more organic, natural sounding volume in your pa in your uh, songs in your drum patterns. Next up was going to be our pads. Pads are pretty important as because they are the, you know, the layer, the sort of like the bed of the track on which everything lays on. So uh, always take some time to really listen to how you want your pads to sound. Whatever, whatever quality you want to put in them. You know, whatever extra, um, uh, what's the word, like extra uh, detail or um, flourish, you know, sort of that sort of, you know, like main background color you want to give your track. Uh, this is where the pads come in really helpful. We can listen to the pads by themselves. And uh, that reminds me of like an intro from like a video game song, a video game soundtrack. So it, that sort of took me onto the journey of, oh, maybe I should make this, make this, you know, this ethereal sound to it and um, sort of created it. You can look at my effects here. It's a super saw with the pad transparent um, preset. There's a lot of uh, effects going on, mostly just a side chain in the form of the auto duck. Uh, filter, which this is what uh, I give movement throughout the track, so you'll see some filter. Um, a little bit of reverb, which is after the filter. Just interesting thing to note um, that if you, where you put these do have an effect on how it goes. It's like a little chain. So if you put something later in the chain, it's going to have more of, it might affect something different like before the chain than after. So keep that in mind. Uh, you know, like the EQ, the reverb, the filter, all these could be placed in different little sections, which would allow it to uh, sort of affect the way it sounds. So yeah, this is a rabbit hole. You could go really down and far and deep with how you want effects to go out and do things. And uh, I think it would be rewarding for you to experiment around, uh, find some things, and uh, maybe find your own sort of effects chain that, that makes that awesome little sound or awesome little effects that you like so uh, for this one though nothing too complicated just more like filters reverb eq a little stereoizer and that's just to give it all that wonderful space to make up the bed <clears throat> of the track 
that it's laying in. So um, feel free to experiment. Feel free to get a little, little curious about your effects and then, you know, go from there. So next up is the um, like electric piano, which this is just what it's called. Uh, you know, I really don't know what the name of the little sections are going to be. It's just kind of what the sounds I take on. But I, um, I call this kind of like the accents that sort of the melodic accents that make up the ends and the phrases of the track to sort of define the phrases. We'll listen to it here. Real peaceful, real chill, gentle, um, sort of the, I guess, the B plot, <laughs> I guess, maybe the A plot. I don't know what you want to call, but it's it's definitely like a part of it that gives it that uh, sort of that quality that sort of makes it melodic and and goes along together with the progressive section of it. So uh, so these these three are basically just all part of the same structure here. Uh, one is designed to come a little later in the track. And this in is sort of like a different color, it gives it a little bit of different color to the uh, track as it's going through. So it kind of plays in the intro, goes for a little while, then it stops. And then that's where sort of the, the main motif of it is taken over. And uh, you can hear it throughout the entirety of the track. I won't play it and bug you, but that's where the main motif is going to be carried through and where all these other instruments sort of come in to complement it. And uh, this is the defines the structure, you know, of a pretty much a standard mellow prog type of tune. Um, you have a little something of an intro here. And then the intro comes in, and then you have the main main section, chorus, you know, verse. You can call it anything you want. The naming of it is not that that important as what what you feel it to be and how you want to give it out to the listener, how you want the listener to receive it. So, uh, you know, this little intro section, let's see if we can just solo this out here. Oh. And uh, like that's these little like three right here are, are what's gonna kind of carry the whole throughout the whole part of the tune. You can even see it in the arrangement itself, how it's gonna look and how it's gonna go. So uh, that's my favorite part really uh, of this track and why you know I spent so much time on it. We have this all grouped out or bust out to where it gets its own side chain. I did have some compression going on, but I ended up taking it off. I didn't like it. Um, we have some EQ, and then we have a little bit of a stereoization, kind of spacing it out. A little stereo separation to sort of widen uh, this these elements out a little bit. They go out throughout the whole entirety of the track. So once you hear the first part of it, you kind of get that it's going to go throughout the whole section. And, um, you know, have fun. Have fun with this part. Don't don't take it too serious. Let it be something that you really like and enjoy. You know, don't uh, get too distracted or too hung up on it sounding perfect or anything uh, because the natural organic sound of the nature of it I believe is really important quality of melodic progressive house so don't get too distracted or hung up on it just make it put it in there see how it goes you know of course give it the best mix down you can give it and then after that uh, let it be let it be part of the track for the b section of the verse when we start this, we'll say this is the A, we can call this the B, and uh, there's this little sort of arp sound here, and you can look at it, it's just sort of like some chords with a little bit of flourishes at the end. Go ahead and take that, and uh, and also it's filtered into the track and then filtered out. So uh, just imagine something, you know, it kind of fades in, stays, and then fades out. If you can remember that sort of uh, progression, fade in, stay for a while, fade out. If you can remember that set of progressions, then you basically got the idea of melodic progressive or progressive house in general. You've got it down. That is definitely a very key component of 
progressive house music or a lot of electronic music in general is you want to you're going to want to fade uh, a section in let it stay then fade it out we can listen here on the preview hopefully this works And it's just a little arp sound, like something extra, kind of like twinkles, you know, the stars in the sky, the decoration of the stars of the sky. Uh, I kind of think of it like that, you know, like twinkling of the stars to sort of make up the whole sky. That's exactly what this is for. Uh, and as you can see, it fades in. So I don't know if we want to keep going with our metaphor. The sunset, the sun sets here. This is where the sun's setting. It's all nighttime and then the sun rises so that's the you know that's the idea of this progression here is a lot of like sun mini sunsets sunrises and a, or you can consider it a sunrise or sunset you know however your angle is just sort of keep that in mind whenever you are creating your own my little prog track that you're not you're not uh too static where you're not keeping it all sort of one uh time of day the day slowly shifts gets a little bit into the sunset like this is maybe the brightest portion or the darkest portion of the track and then you know it has another section maybe it's the in between maybe it's the dusk evening side uh whatever metaphor sounds good to you that's just the one that popped into my head as making this you don't have to go with it but if you can understand that in the progressive just the progressive nature of the track then you'll you'll definitely be all well on your way you can look at almost every element and there's some sort of progression where it fades into the track and fades out going on and to what to what to embellish these or make it more um you know more of noticeable are the effects so that's what all these effects down here are for you have these little like uh you know um i don't know i don't know what, what the column besides just uh you know flourishes you know melodic flourishes that that make the tune sound even more unique and organic towards towards itself more original you know because another artist could use their own versions of this and it will make it sound completely different and then you have these effects so i have wind chimes i have a little some crashes i have you know some more crashes some more cymbals uh, and then we have these little noise risers and drops. Uh, all of these are just sort of carrying each little section from section one to section two. These are little things that, little tricks and tips that I use to carry them in there. And even here at the bottom, we have some singing birds, nature, you know, nature sounds that sort of start and carry the track off. I've talked about this in previous videos, but I can't stress this enough that um, this is what I love to do. You could put anything in here. You could put train tracks, you could put waterfalls, you could put birds singing, you could put dogs barking, anything that sort of sets the mood in nature, any sound sound effect, uh, find it, put it in there and, and let it be uh, part of it. Uh, the most important part of the nature sound effects is in the beginning, sort of kind of Prepping, prepping your ears that this is happening. And then, of course, I have it happening into the bridge itself. Bridges are always my favorite part. I really enjoy uh, the slow down, the like, you know, the relax, the breathing nature. And that's a perfect time to add the sort of out of the blue, you know, out on the side sound effects that really kind of give the listener that impression that it's more enveloped into, you know, deeper into the track. Uh, let's see if we can preview this. And uh, it's not playing properly. Whenever you kind of solo something and unsolo it, sometimes some some patterns might not play. But it doesn't matter. The whole point is, uh, uh, oops, 
the whole point is that there's going to be some kind of effects here so we can like play it maybe you'll hear it here perfect perfect so that little singing bird nature sound effect that's what really kind of you know adds just that little extra bit of spice you know to the pot of music and uh, I think it's it's really important that you find your own sort of versions of these little sounds whatever it could be uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be sound effects either it could be maybe something you've created that you've designed yourself uh, it could be maybe another sort of ARP section that you made yourself it doesn't have to be specifically that but just sort of keep that in mind um, because that's that's sort of important to making the um, the nature of your song sound organic and unique to you as the artist, the presenter of the melodies and the you know the sounds. Uh, don't get too you know don't don't get too like you know worried or nervous or hung up and like oh I can't find the right because at the end of the day it's not it's not as big of a deal as you just completing this track, making it pushing yourself through to the end. Uh, if you made any mistakes in this one. Uh, it's okay, just consider it, you know, artistic, <laughs> you know, uh, creative, creative decisions, and you can do better on the next one, or, you know, come back to it next year when you've had a long break from it, and say, oh, yeah, I could have done that better, you know, and then, yeah, make a little remix or something to it, you know, don't get too hung up on, on each decision, because at the end of the day, it's just music, it's meant to be something that's enjoyed and listened to by the listener, you're not going to make the perfect thing ever, and you are very lucky if you do. <laughs> You're lucky if you do, you know, it's it's an act of luck. It's not really anything that you can do intentionally, and uh, no art will ever be finished or completely done. So just go as far as you can, work on it as long as you can, until you find yourself unable to work on it any longer. Uh, and then, you know, clean up all loose edges, loose ends, until you have a product that you're, you know, that you're pretty happy with. Even if you're not 100% happy with it, it's okay. Just get some, get to somewhere where you know that at least, you know, you've done the best you can do and that it's all done. Um, we'll go over my mastering uh, uh, tricks here. Uh, I wouldn't say a really trick. It's just what I do is I usually put it through a limiter first. So you can see here there's a limiter on top. And uh, it's it's thresholds at negative six dB. Uh, we can play a little bit of it. And with that, there's nothing really you know super crazy going on, but you can see that it sort of peaks a little bit above negative six dB. That's what this threshold side on the side is for. Um, so I just have something that catches a little bit that goes above it. And then um, if I wanted to export it or, or put it out for a pre-master, maybe somebody else want to take it and master it, then uh, I would probably keep this negative 6 dB uh, limiter on at the end, send it out to the mastering company or mastering source and let them bring it up a little bit higher. Uh, typically, if you're going to send it out to a label and they're going to apply their own mastering to it, they're going to want a negative 6 pre-master. That's what it means. So, but for this one, I mastered it myself. So uh, I didn't really care about it being exported out there um, as a negative six, but I did have it just in case. So I sort of, that's sort of my baseline. And then we go from there, we go to the next section. Um, this has a multi-band compression. Now uh, it looks really simple or, or really like, you know, but this thing right here is so powerful. Um, and it's hard to, I can't really explain to you how multi-band compression works in at the in, in a in a breakdown video but i did use it um you know focusing on uh just just sort of um uh, trimming and tailoring out the the peaks of the lows mids and highs uh afterwards oops afterwards we go to a little bit of equalization here i don't think it was that high uh which is the same thing we sort of like tailor and try to catch any of the low mids and highs and sort of even it all out since that's really kind of the whole point of mastering is to add that little spice on top and then also catch any of the areas that maybe are too high and that's what this analyzer is down here at the bottom it shows me it 
shows me what is too high, too low, or maybe spiking in a way that I might my ears might not have caught. So uh, I use that as a way to analyze the frequency section of the of the tunes and make sure everything looks decent. It's not going to be perfect. And if you are working on a phone, iPad or whatever, you know, you are going to be having like, you know, like iPhone speakers, you know, you're going to have a little sec uh, you're not going to have proper monitoring speakers. So just keep that in mind. It's not the end of the world, but if you can kind of look at this, it'll give you at least a bird's eye view of like, oh, wow, I have way too much going on in, in the one kilohertz to two kilohertz section. And then you can make some EQ adjustments or maybe you can go find that track that's the problem child and you could turn down that in the EQ section itself. Um, so that's how I do it, you know, especially when it gets to the end and I know I'm about done. I will put on the headphones and I'll give it a quick mastering session or mix down really it's more like a mix down we'll give it a mix down on the end and then after that it's all done so uh that is the end of how i have created this track you know so beautiful it's all part of an ep you can go and download it from my band camp or you can download it from soundcloud um if you'd like to also the project file for this is available on my website zafer.com slash mobile Go there to pick it up. It's free. It's name your own price. So if you find that there's some value to it, you're welcome to, you know, submit a tip or donate what you feel this is worth to you. But really, what's more important is that you get this, be able to pull it up in your own, on your own device and make your own awesome melodic progressive house tunes. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for being a part of this journey. Thank you for you know, hearing this breakdown, I hope that this was helpful, informational, educational to you, um, and that it'll bring you a little bit of more insight about how I made my music and how I go about making my songs and uh, give you a little help along your way. So I hope you all have a lovely day. Thank you again. We will catch you on the next video. Bye, everybody.